low key so you don't have to be worried about flashing your CC logo or your LVs everywhere even if it's a uh, you know somewhere where you don't want to do that because hey guys welcome to my channel i'm jess i just wanted to say thanks guys because i'm almost at 7,000 subscribers if you haven't already please like and subscribe to my channel i would super appreciate it my goal honestly guys at the end of the year is to get to 10k subs which i know is a little bit ambitious i like to put my dreams out there so let's hit the 10k mark at some point i asked you guys on my instagram what i should talk about in today's video and you guys voted that i should talk about five essential bags to have when you begin your handbag collection. Well guys, I had a little think about this and I know when I started my handbag collection, I had a lot of different dreams and desires back then. My life was also, to be honest, not that different, but I just had a different kind of desire to buy bags and I hadn't owned any designer bags before. I actually created a dream board back in I think 2000 and it could have been 2015 or 2016. I am I'm 31 years old so I yeah I probably started collecting around the age of 26 or so and I started out by collecting uh, bags that I found on eBay and secondhand. But I created this dream board before I had any designer bags. I had a few Kate Spade bags, Coach. I got into a whole few Japanese brands. Definitely, I feel like most people when they start their collection go for contemporary brands first. I don't know if it's common for to go straight to like a Birkin uh, as your first bag unless you've inherited it or your family comes from wealth maybe and you're used to seeing Birkins and Kellys all the time like you know Kylie Jenner or something. As I'm not born into a uh, hyper wealth family but my dream bags when I first started were definitely this pastel boy bag. Love that. I mean that's like a little princess bag. I loved this little mini speedy which I did end up getting at one point. I loved the Infra Rouge Palm Springs mini. That was a really hyped bag at the time that I saw a lot of celebrities wearing. Always wanted the Chanel Classic flap. I was obsessed with this pink Fendi peekaboo. I just thought that the like Fendi peekaboo was actually my dream bag for a long time, but it's always been very expensive. I especially liked this style with the pink. I mean, very girly choices here. I mean, it's very interesting. I also like, love these Balenciaga shoes, um, the Prada platforms. I love that as well. Um, and all the other stuff is just really random, like, I don't know, some wedding shoes there. So anyways, I still really like all the bags on my dream board from like six years ago, but I don't have any of these bags. But at some point I did buy um, the Mini Speedy, I did buy the Palm Springs Mini, not in Infarouge, but I have experienced it. And I did have a classic flap and I didn't end up keeping them actually because I found that I don't know they weren't just they just weren't my ideal bags after all and so you're probably wondering well then what are your five ideal bags to start your collection and i think for a lot of people uh throughout their life they'll probably change up their bags quite a lot and although i like to think that i'm going to keep some of these bags forever i know as time goes by i might get sick of them or my life might change so it's really hard to know what five bags to buy first and sometimes i think it's cool to you know explore all the louis vuitton styles explore all the chanel styles before you really settle down into a solid collection first bag i would go for for an essential in your collection is i know it's probably an unpopular opinion but it's got to be a Kelly bag. I know when you're starting out with luxury it's a bit ambitious to go from zero to a Kelly but I think that the Kelly in size 32 is a really really nice option because well the 32 is a really nice day bag it fits all the essentials your makeup your keys your phone I think in the Salier construction it's really stunning as well but Retourne is also really beautiful I would wouldn't be opposed to getting a Retourne as well in the future not anytime soon but I think the Kelly is just such a classic and beautiful bag and there are so many bags that are inspired by this trapezoid shape the craftsmanship is stunning I would say if for an essential in your collection that I think will always be relevant would be a Kelly 32 box in black so shiny box in black a Kelly 32 that I feel like you could get for you if you scrounged the internet enough or you were savvy you could probably find a really good deal on that a vintage box Kelly 
32 because size 32 at the moment is not as popular and I just think that's a bag that is so classic, so beautiful and it's actually very versatile for the weekend and even if you have a fancier job you could probably use it for work as well. And the 32, I know a lot of people say it's too big but honestly guys this size to me is very practical and it's a very useful size. So yeah, my first essential would be a Kelly 32 black box. Now this is not box calf, this is actually Epsom and this is from 2004 so it's not actually vintage but I think when you're starting out it's it's nice to go into vintage because it's just, I don't know, it's nice to explore. I think Hermes vintage is really nice so yeah that would be my first pick. Uh, vintage box Kelly 32. My second essential bag to start off your collection would be a Loewe bag. One of my faves is definitely the puzzle bag. Now this is actually my bag of the day and the puzzle bag although it is not like a super old design I think it came out in like 2014 or so I think it's a really low-key get cool girl bag. The quality on Loewe puzzle bags are also really nice and this kind of zip bag is very practical for you know traveling in the city a uh, casual wear way they do really gorgeous colors as well but i think most definitely you could find the black with silver hardware super useful if you have more of an edgy style or perhaps you could go for the brown color which is also super popular i think there's a caramel or tan color i also love the tricolor uh, puzzle bags if you want something a bit more funky. So you could even get a seasonal puzzle bag but this bag to, is one of my most used bags this year. I do not regret it at all. Even though I've been Hermes obsessed I absolutely love the puzzle. I still think it's totally worth the purchase. You attach the strap, you can top handle it, you can get a lot of looks out of it and it the small size especially fits I think enough for daily use. For me I think another bag essential which might be an unpopular opinion again. I think it's going to be very unpopular actually, but it's only based on how much I personally use it, and that is the Pico Tin bag. I know a lot of people hate the Pico Tin because it just looks like a little sack, but when I just don't know what bag to wear, I always reach for this Pico Tin, maybe because it's like my favorite color, Rose Extreme. I think if you're going to get a Pico Tin, absolutely get it in your favorite color. If you love green, get a green one. If you love bright blue get blue if you're more of a neutral girl get a neutral one i think the pico tin is especially cute in bright colors but it's just such an easy bag you just grab it chuck your stuff in there and go it's light it's low key so you don't have to be worried about flashing your cc logo or your lvs everywhere even if it's a you know somewhere where you don't want to do that because sometimes i find in life you just don't want to be wearing an obviously designer bag and that's where i find the picotin to be so useful it's also usually comes in the the clemence leather which is one of my favorite leathers it's just so it's just such a satisfying leather to touch and you do definitely i feel like for this bag need a bag organizer but I just love the Picatin and you know you can buy them pre-loved for sometimes a good deal um, just depending uh, now they're kind of going up a little bit of value since I'd say like two years ago but I just love the Picatin it's one of my personal favorites so I would recommend that that's one of my personal essential bags I think usually people would recommend a Louis Vuitton bag um, but I don't know guys, I'm kind of over the monogram canvas. I know that's an unpopular opinion. I think the monogram canvas is really good because it is, it's it's, it's good for all weather. It's lightweight, easy to wipe down, um, and it still can be cheaper than some other leather alternatives. But for me, it's not my favorite option. And actually I find that, I've said this before, but the monogram canvas doesn't always work with my outfit. Sometimes I find the, the monogram to be a little bit too much and it makes me look a bit too branded. I don't know guys, I feel like if you don't want to go for a Kelly, I think you could even go for a Capucine. I heard that the Capucine is also crafted really beautifully. Uh, they are rather expensive now though. Um, or even a Fendi Peekaboo could be another option if you don't want a Kelly. But I think another bag that I've personally been reaching for a lot lately, which I think I would really miss if I didn't have it in my collection. So number four is the Lindy bag. I know a lot of people are not going to say this is like a handbag essential, but for me, it's actually very similar to the puzzle. But the thing I like, like about the Lindy is that it's just the perfect little dumpling shoulder bag. And I often wear it like this. I think the shape again is really unique. It's very low key again. 
sometimes when I first saw the Lindy 26, I thought it looked a little bit too mature. And maybe because I am like 30 now, maybe that's why I like it. Maybe if you're in your 20s, it does look a bit mature. But I think it fits a lot. It's really lightweight. Mine is in Swift. And I just think that if if like all my handbags got stolen, I would probably really miss my Lindy because I actually use it so much, similar to my puzzle. So yeah, I'm going to make this number four. And honestly, guys, I think I would find a lot of use out of a garden party as well because it's a similar sack shape to the the Picotin. Because, and so I think if you're into the garden party, that could also be a really good um, handbag essential because it's just a simple tote. But the leather is really nice and it comes in some really nice colours. That being said, you could probably find like a simple tote bag that's a contemporary brand. You don't necessarily have to go for a Nomad's bag, but... Yeah, and it's quite plain, the garden party. So maybe not the garden party, but that's something that I've been considering as well. Number five, guys. I think you can't go wrong with a Chanel 2.55. So, again, I think a lot of people will disagree that the 2.55 is an essential. I think a lot of people will say the Chanel Mini is an essential. So let me just show you guys uh, some from my personal collection. This is a Chanel Mini 2.55 in green. And the thing I like about the reissue or the 2.55 is that it's a little bit more subtle than the mini flap. So I love the minis as well. I just recently went to a wedding and I wore my mini square. I found it quite suitable actually for that. But I knew I did get a few little stares because it's a Chanel bag. And sometimes around family, it's just a little bit too showy because of the cc logo and i feel like i don't know it almost makes it look more i hate to say it guys but there's so many super fakes out there now that i'm like questioning every cc logo bag i see and i always feel like the cc logo to me because probably because i'd be I, i'm always around luxury and i see it a lot to me it's kind of got a little bit boring and it's just sometimes it can overpower your outfit like, sometimes when you wear something, you don't want to just see a brand. You just want to see a really nice look. And this, I, I'm kind of over wearing bags that are super, you know, you're just buying it for the designer brand. I kind of prefer designs that speak for themselves. And this is a beautiful little boxy bag. But I think, actually, there is a lot more of a story behind the 2.55. I mean, it is based on the original Chanel flat bag. I think the Mademoiselle lock is also very low key and just enough. And I absolutely love the chain as well. I just think it's very intricate. I love the little etchings on it. So the 2.55 bag, I think, is a uh, essential for your collection because I think it can take you from day to night especially in black if you get a uh, like a small size I think that could be gorgeous for an evening bag or uh, like a daily bag and the distressed calf skin is quite durable usually um, and it's not as delicate as a modern day lamb skin which most minis are available in Caviar is also a really nice option from Chanel, but I think the distressed calf skin is really underrated and it can kind of edge up your outfit, but at the same time, it also can be dressed up. I just think it's like a very versatile style, the 2.55, and it's very underrated, probably because it's less recognizable and more low-key, but in a way, I think that makes it have more longevity. Yeah, for me, I would recommend, however, getting a 2.55 pre-loved because they a lot more affordable in the pre-love market and I find that the sometimes the older 2.55s have superior leather and craftsmanship to the newer ones. So a handbag essential, green, yeah I would just get in your favourite colour but I think you can't go wrong with black either. So yeah I guess I blabbed on a lot in that video so let me know guys what are your five handbag essentials? Do you think mine were very good recommendations. I know that some of them were a little bit too expensive for a starter pack, but um, yeah, I think these five bags I would actually miss quite a lot if I didn't have them. And I, they're actually bags that I do use and I find good for different occasions. So anyways, thanks for listening to my video today and I'll talk to you on my next one. Bye.